guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com, and this is the Samsung Solstice 2 from AT&T. It's a basic little feature phone. It doesn't have a physical keyboard, but it does have a 3-inch capacitive touchscreen display, and it has a 2-megapixel camera. Now, actually, I'm very impressed by this feature phone. It performed very well, and even though it doesn't have a physical keyboard, the touchscreen was responsive enough to where you could do some light texting if you wanted to. And overall, just as a feature phone for someone that needs a phone for basic functions but that adds some style to it, it was a great phone. So it's available from AT&T for $29.99 on contract. I'm going to do a full review and give you some more details on it. Um, but it's a Samsung Solstice 2 from AT&T. I'm Sydney from PhoneDoc.com. Let's go check it out. So as far as cell phone goes, the Solstice 2 is pretty basic and also very, very similar to the original Solstice. It has pretty much the same specs. The only difference is that you're given an updated um, hardware design. So if you're looking for you know, a better phone or an upgrade from the Solstice, you know, you're really not going to get that, but it is an upgraded design. So basically you have the three standard buttons at the bottom for talk, send, back, and then end and power. A dedicated camera button. Um, this is a sort of task menu button, and then this is a nifty um, feature that I really that I really like because it's basically the screen lock and unlock slider. So you can slide down to lock the screen or slide it down to unlock the screen, which is really nice because with a lot of Samsung devices, whenever the screen is locked, you have to do well. You have to do a long hold on the lock icon right there. And just, you know, sometimes it can get a little frustrating on a lot of other phones, and especially smartphones, you can just press a button to unlock it. So having to do the long hold can sometimes, you know, be a little annoying to some people. So it's nice to have just the um, slide down to lock and then slide down to unlock. There is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack or 2.5. You do have a micro USB port, um, if, which you can buy a set of headphones if you really want to. Um, you could buy a set of headphones for that, but it doesn't come with one. Um, it does have a micro SD card slot underneath the battery cover. It doesn't ship with a card, um, but it does support up to 16 gigabytes. It's right there. It supports up to 16 gigabytes of memory. While I have the battery cover off, um, I'll show you the battery. It's a 1000 milliamp hour battery, and I was very impressed. Let me lock the screen here. I was very impressed with the battery life. Um, it lasted, you know, nearly a week on standby, uh, which is pretty good, you know, just for phones in general. You know, a lot of times with smartphones, you only get like, you know, maybe two days of use out of it. So in general, feature phones tend to have better battery life, but even for a feature phone, I got excellent battery life. And then you have the two megapixel camera, doesn't have flash or autofocus, has, um, you know, panorama, panorama mode, smile detection, different brightness features and things like that. But other than that, it's a pretty standard camera. It does capture video in VGA quality, which is 320 by 240. And you know, whenever I was testing out the camera, I found that, you know, pictures weren't um, spectacular, but it took pretty nice snapshots. You'll notice, you know, from far away, um, it was pretty clear that the camera is the right, or the phone is the right size to where it just feels really comfortable um, taking a picture, which is, you know, something that I think a lot of manufacturers take for granted, um, the comfort and placement of the, of the button as well as the overall design in taking a picture. And I think with a Solstice 2, um, it really is comfortable in taking a picture. Not that that's a huge deal, and I know, but, you know, for me, um, it was it was nice. It was comfortable, and then so basic pictures. You know, came out fairly well. This was in you know a little bit low light, but then taking pictures close up. I don't know if you if you'll be able to tell, but it was kind of blurry. So this is a close up shot, and then I have another close up shot from an, from another angle, and. Now the phone just went crazy, I think because I tilted it. Um, so yeah, close-up shots were just kind of blurry, but just overall, you know, snapshots that, you know, if you want to take a quick photo and then send it, um, they came out pretty well. Now you'll see the user interface is basically just Samsung's TouchWiz UI, which we've seen before. You have three home screens. You can see which home screen you're on at the moment. And then you have a widget drawer where all of your widgets are, um, are held and then you can also customize which widgets are in this drawer and then if you want to pull out a widget like say the clock I can just slide it out and it goes there so um, it's pretty nice I enjoy Samsung's TouchWiz UI some people don't it's kind of just you know personal opinion um, one interesting thing 
that the phone does come with is uh, widgets for Twitter, as you can see, as well as a widget for Facebook. So kind of interesting, you know, obviously it's not, you know, a very data intense widget. So I think it, you can set it to update automatically every hour, uh, every three hours or once a day, and, and then you can manually update it if you'd like to. This screen is a three inch capacitive touchscreen display. It has a resolution of 240 by 400, and actually in terms of capacitive touchscreens on feature phones, it was pretty good. Now, I will say it's not gonna be up to par with a capacitive touchscreen on a smartphone, you know, don't expect that at all. But when I was comparing it to other phones, other feature phones that have a capacitive touchscreen, um, like for example, the Pantec Crux, which also has a capacitive touchscreen, you know, typing and the experience on the Crux was not very good, uh, whereas on the Solstice 2 is definitely better. And so, you know, while it doesn't have a physical keyboard, you're gonna have to use a virtual keyboard, you know, I wouldn't, for that reason, I wouldn't recommend it for heavy textures, but if you do want to use it for that, it would be okay. You know, again, going back to the crux, not a very good capacitive touchscreen, so I would not recommend it at all for um, any kind of text messaging unless it's just, you know, kind of sporadic and here and there. Um, but this capacitive touchscreen was actually better. Um, you know, it doesn't support multi-touch, it's gonna be a little laggy, so it won't catch every letter that you type. But, you know, compared to others, um, it was pretty good, so I, you know, it's not really a messaging phone, um, but like I said, if you want to use it for some occasional messaging, um, I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't be as bad as other feature phones that I've used. So let me finish typing this out. Quick brown fox. And of course, you're going to have to type a little slower because uh, there's no multi-touch, so every letter has to be put in perfectly over the lazy dog. And of course, I'm typing even slower because there's a giant camera in my way. So the quick brown fox jumped to the lazy dog, typed really slowly and with run, one error. So not perfect, but um, better, better than I've used in the past and on other devices. It does have threaded text messaging. If you go to messaging, it's organized by inbox and outbox, but also by conversations. So if you don't like threaded, then you do have the option to view them, you know, unthreaded, I guess is the word, um, but you can view it by conversation and it's shown in little speech bubbles there. So very nice. So let's go to the menu and we'll look at just a couple of other features that the phone comes with. AT&T Navigator, Social Net, Yellow Pages Mobile, AT&T Music, um, Mobile Web. You know, all of these features, especially the browser, one, you're going to have to pay for data. Two, they're not going to be that great. The browser, you know, I wouldn't recommend using it for heavy browsing. If you want to do something really quick and simple, like, you know, go to ESPN's mobile site and just check out the scores really quick or something like that, it would be fine. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend it for um, heavy browsing. Same thing with mobile email. You can get your email to the phone. You're going to have to pay for the data. And it's not going to be the most the smoothest operation that you've ever seen. I almost said smooth operator, like the Shaw Day song that was, don't ask. Anyway, and then you have AT&T Maps, Where, Family Map, MyCast Weather, AT&T Radio, uh, Star Tweets, which I don't know if anyone actually uses that. So there are some nice features, and then there's some, cu some customization features that are nice. You can see this icon in the corner there. If you tap it, you can rearrange the icons in the menu, you can uh, delete them, and then you can add others. So some nice customization features there. And then of course, these three home screens, uh, you can change the background wallpaper. And obviously, as you can see, um, they can all be different. They don't have to be the same. So that's pretty much it, guys. It's the Samsung Solstice 2 from AT&T. And overall, you know, I'm very impressed. It is still a basic feature phone, so I wouldn't recommend it for people who, are, who want a lot of media capabilities or are gonna do a lot of texting. But still, for a basic feature phone, I think it's great. And um, better than some of the other options on AT&T. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, most recently, the um, low battery. I've been thinking of most recently the um, the LG Encore, which we just did a review on, um, and we're also going to do a dog fight with the Solstice 2. But just you know, comparing those two phones right off, I think the battery went dead. Well, it did last for a long time, even though it happened to go dead right now. Um, 
But just you know, comparing it to other phones on AT&T's network in terms of feature phones, I think it's definitely um, the best option right now that's you know just recently been released. So go check it out. The Solstice 2 from AT&T. I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Check out PhoneDog.com for more news, updates, and reviews. Also, our Facebook page. Right now, we're giving away up to 100 iPads, as well as two tickets to the 2011 Super Bowl. So check that out, facebook.com slash phone dog. You can also follow me on Twitter. My screen name is It's My Job to Know. So come and ask any questions and I'll try to answer them. Thanks guys for watching. I'm Cindy from phonedog.com and I'll see you guys later.